Hey guys, I'd like to draw your attention to an explanation given by Dr. Michael Brown on the begetting of the Son in Psalm chapter 2. Now this explanation was given years ago in a debate that he had uh, where he tag teamed with Dr. James White. They were Trinitarians and their opposition were Unitarians, uh, one of them being uh, Sir Anthony Buzzard. It was a very popular debate at the time. Now I want to say I have a whole lot of respect for Dr. Uh, Michael Brown. Um, I look to him as a leader in many ways, a great man of character and influence, and uh, definitely a student of the word. But in this particular case, he misunderstands what it means to be begotten in Psalm chapter 2. Now, the Greek word which underlies this word is ganao, and it's used in the Septuagint, Psalm chapter 2. It's also used in, in Hebrews chapter 1 in the Greek. Now, ganao simply means to bring forth, produce, cause, to procreate. It actually speaks of an origin. In this particular case, Psalm chapter 2, you are my son, today I have begotten you. It speaks of an origin for the son. It speaks of an origin for his begetting. Now a lot of Trinitarians will argue an eternal begetting of the son, but that's clearly an, an unbiblical understanding of what it means to beget. To beget must happen in time. And I understand that Trinitarians have a problem with Psalm chapter 2 because they have to maintain uh, that the second person of the Trinity is co-equal and co-eternal with the Father. But that's not what the scriptures actually teach. If you take Psalm 2 literally, it speaks of a begetting, a, a bringing forth, a producing, a procreating of the Son at a point in time. And elsewhere we know this happened just prior to creation, the beginning of time when God used his son as his personal agent to create all things. Now on to Dr. Michael Brown's clip, and I hope you enjoy it. Let, let's, get back to, <laughs> let's get back to the beginning issue. It's yeah. spirited. You, you keep coming back to that. The, the beginning language occurs yes. most clearly in Psalm 2, which is a coronation psalm. It doesn't speak of the creation of the king. It, it, it speaks of it when the king is coronated, Who that those... Psalm, Psalm yeah. 2, mm -hmm. because this is the right. decree. The Lord said to yes. me, you are my son, speaking yes. first and yes. foremost to the Davidic king and then by application to the Messiah. Uh, okay. Psalm 2 rightly mm -hmm. understood, historically understood, mm -hmm. as the vast majority of scholars, since mm -hmm. you like to mm -hmm. cite scholars, mm -hmm. would agree. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. this day I begotten you, does yeah. not speak of bringing him into existence, did, but of his taking on the role of son, right. just as in 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter, God says oh. to the descendants of David, I'll be a father to them, they'll be my sons. Right. So at the time of coronation, they were recognized Ooh. as that role of son of God. So as Jesus comes into the world, he is now designated son of God. Of at his resurrection, Romans 1, Acts 13, he is recognized as son of God.